Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be making a frogging cute card using the Jump for Joy stamp set from Spellbinders. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. As I mentioned last month, Spellbinders reached out to me to see if I would like to try out some of their stamps from their Card Maker 2 series. And I was like, heck yes. Up on screen now is a look at the cards I created last month with the new start stamp set. And I will have that video linked in the description box below and at the end of this video as an end card if you would like to check that out. Well, the other set I chose was this Jump for Joy. And I just loved these cute little frogs and the punny sentiments. Here's a close-up look at the set. You have two little froggies who are kind of stuck on something and then one on a leaf. Now when I first saw this I knew that I wanted to make a card where it looked like the frogs were like stuck on glass kind of looking out at you just here with their little feet. You know, they look like they're stuck to a window or maybe an aquarium. So that's what I'm going to do today. In front of me are the main supplies I'll be using. I have some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. Of course, the stamp set. I'll be stamping with VersaFine Onyx Black. And I also pulled out a few of the Circle Nest Abilities. And for the card itself, I'm going to use this piece of kind of bright green polka dotted pattern paper and I have a little piece of clear cardstock. As I add any more products or tools, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! While I work on stamping my images onto a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth with VersaFine Onyx Black ink, I did want to give you a heads up that just about everything that could go wrong with this card today did go wrong. So I wanted to go ahead and keep this video, keep the little boo-boos in it, just so you can see that we all have happy accidents. Not everything is YouTube video perfect all the time, but it's about how you make it work. Since I wanted to end up with one big frog and two little ones, once I had the first two stamped onto the cardstock is when I ran into my first little hiccup. I had cleaned the stamp and did not realize there was still some water on it. So you'll see here when I pick up the stamp with the door of the Misty, I have wet black water on my cardstock. But I just brought in the little towel I keep handy here below my desk. And you know what? It came off pretty well. So I proceeded with stamping my third frog at the top of that piece. Once I had all three of my images stamped, I brought in my heat tool and I set the ink to ensure that it wouldn't run when I did the coloring. And speaking of coloring, that's what I did next. Before I started coloring, I did do a little online research to get an idea of what colors a tree frog might be. So I think I googled tree frog clip art just so I could get something a little more cartoony but that would also be colored correctly. Well the image that I ended up going with, it's not exactly a cartoon, but I thought the colors in it would be something that I could do. Up on screen now is the image that I use for my reference and that is how I chose the colors that I'll be using for my coloring today. 
For my frog's belly, I used number 64 oatmeal, and I will list all of the colors in the description box if you want to check those out. But what I usually do is just go around the outside of the area with the marker and then bring in my colorless blender and pull the color into the center. I am a pretty simple colorist, colorer, not sure which one is correct, if either. And so I usually only use one color and then my colorless blender. Sometimes, and you'll see here with the next part, I do shade with one color and then pull it in with another. So for the green on this frog, for his face, um, the rest of his body and his legs, I used number 40 green for the shadow and number 41 light green to pull that color in. So you'll see here with the frog's face, I go around the outside edges and where there might be shadows, and then I bring in the lighter color green and I pull that in just a little bit. And then because my marker has some extra color on it, I do clean that off on the little scrap of paper I have next to me and then keep continuing to pull in that color until the area is all full. I do like to color in small sections at a time just so nothing dries and won't move on the paper later. Once his face, body, and legs were colored, I brought in number 23 scarlet red and I brought back in number 64 oatmeal to color his eyes. I wanted a little bit more earthy orange for this, so I went on the outside edges with that scarlet red, and then I pulled that color a little bit of the way in with the oatmeal. And then to get a little highlight down the center, I brought in the colorless blender and removed some of the color from the center of the eye. Again, I'm just using that sample image that you see up here in the upper left for my colors and trying to follow it as best as I can. For his little feet, I use the scarlet red again, but this time instead of using oatmeal to blend, I did bring in the colorless blender. I've shown you now how to color most of one frog, so the rest of them I did do off screen, and once they were done, I took them to my brother's scan and cut and had it fussy cut them out for me. Like I mentioned earlier, I want it to look like these frogs are stuck on glass looking out from inside the card. So to do this, I need some windows and I selected three of the middle circles from that circle die cut set and I arranged those on the card front so that my frogs would fit in each window. Now only the large one will be completely on there and you'll see for the two smaller ones, I played a little bit with how they would look. Once I had the circles where I wanted them, I brought in my scotch blue removable tape and I tacked each circle down with that. Now this tape is the greatest, I think, to hold dies down. It will hold on to the dies while you run it through your die cutter. And then when you pull it up, it does not ruin the paper at all. And you can actually save it for later. I use these little pieces until they are basically torn apart. I got out my Misty once again, but this time it isn't for stamping. It's just to help me hold the window piece in place and the card base so I can figure out where I want my little frogs to go. Once I have arranged those in a way that I like, I brought in some foam tape and I added it to the back of each of the frogs. Now it is pretty thin, but I did go ahead and have to cut even thinner for their little feet. But once everything was foam taped and the release paper was on there, I stuck these down to the front of the card. Now here's where hiccup number two happened. I didn't think about taking away my circle die cut piece, so that third frog, he got stuck to that. And I had to carefully peel him away and then get him back down on that card front. Since some of the froggy's feet were now hanging off the edges of the card, I brought in my non-stick scissors and just trimmed off that excess. At this point, I was like, wow, that's a lot of white looking from the front. So I took my die cut piece off screen and I added some texture with a herringbone embossing folder. And then when I was ready to move on to the next step, I realized my third little hiccup. 
I was supposed to put the green polka dot paper down on the card base before I adhered my frogs. So not only does this add a little extra color besides just the white cardstock, but it's just another fun shade and you see these through the windows. So off camera, I very carefully unstuck my frogs from that card front again. I did have to put the foam adhesive back on, but here is a little look at the froggies on the light green. And now I can continue with my card. To get that clinging onto glass effect, I brought in a piece of clear cardstock cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. I added some adhesive to the back of this piece and then carefully placed it onto the clear cardstock. Because it is kind of hard to see the edges of that piece, I laid it on the back of the card while I got that laid down. I didn't press hard until I knew it was exactly where it needed to be. And now, to make it look like the frogs are pressed up right against that clear plastic, I'm going to add some of the same foam adhesive to the back of this piece. It's kind of like adding foam to a shaker card, but you don't have to worry so much about covering up any openings. You just want to make sure that you have enough on there so that it won't flatten out later. Once that release paper had been pulled, I carefully added this to the card front, making sure to match up those corners before pressing the adhesive in place. Next, it was time to get a sentiment on this card, and that's when I realized my next hiccup. I should have stamped it before that clear card stock is up in the air. So I crossed my fingers and I went for it. I will be stamping with stays on black ink since it is a non-porous surface and I am using the I'm stuck on you sentiment from the set. Now because I'm going to need some cushion behind that piece of clear plastic, I brought in a scrap of kids fun foam and I cut a strip of that so that the clear cardstock when I went to stamp on it wouldn't just get pressed down to where the polka dot paper is. I got my sentiment set up where I wanted it, crossed my fingers, said a couple prayers, and I inked up my stamp and gave it a whirl. Now after this first one, it wasn't completely stamped, but it was looking good. So I made sure that my card was in the exact place where it was for the first one, and I gave it another go, and I have to say this trick worked pretty well. To finish my card off, you know I'm going to need to add a little bling, so I got out some light green and dark green gems from my stash, and next to each window, I placed kind of a medium size light green gem, and then next to it, I placed a small dark green gem. I just thought this brought out both of those colors of green from the card. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.